Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Airflow Tutorial. So in the previous tutorials, we have learned about the interaction of Airflow, how to set up the environment, and Airflow concepts. Uh, in this video, it will be a lot more exciting because I will take you to a more practical example. So you see the whole process of how I am going to build a data pipeline step by step using Airflow to integrate with other big data and cloud services, in this case, Google Cloud Bakery. Uh, so let me show you what we are going to build. So this tutorial is inspired by this blog post from the official Google Cloud blogs. So if you click on this link here, it will take you to the official cloud uh, blogs from Google Cloud. And you can read about more. I'll put the link in the description below to get more information about how Google, you know, using Airflow to integrate with their cloud technology. So we'll be using two public data sets uh, hosted on Google Bakery. Uh, the first one is called GitHub Archive, which contains 30 million events monthly, including issues, commits, and pushes on GitHub. Uh, that means every single event, you or anyone who are working on uh, contributing to any GitHub uh, public repository will be recorded in this dataset. Another dataset is the Hacker News dataset. So for any of you who are not familiar with Hacker News, uh, it is a social news aggregation website with a focus on uh, tech and uh, entrepreneurship. Um, I, I usually read Hacker News daily to get an update on the latest technology news. Uh, so this dataset contains a full daily update of all the stories and comments from Hacker News. And from the from these two public datasets, uh, we will create a data pipeline for aggregating daily stats of, about GitHub repos and the associated Hacker News story and pushing the result into a new join table every day. And the final table will be used to power this visualization dashboard, which is called the GitHub on Hacker New Trend dashboard created using Google Data Studio. So if you click on this link, it will take you to uh, the dashboard. And this is an interactive re uh, visualization dashboard. And you can see the information here, which is the first column is the Hacker News date, uh, the GitHub repository, uh, and this this link is clickable. So if you click on it, it will take you to the official, you know, GitHub uh, repository of, uh, in this case, Kubernetes. The associated Hacker News link, and this is the link to the Hacker News story. So like I said, Hacker News is a website that discusses about uh, new uh, tech or new uh, or entrepreneurship. And in this story, it, it mainly uh, talk about Kubernetes with the GitHub link here, and all the people comment common and talk about you know kubernetes in, in this story and depends on how popular it is that people upvote or comment on hacker news uh, the hacker news will assign a score to it so the more popular it is in hacker news uh, website they have a higher score uh, but of course uh, and these two columns are the stats from github which is in the past 28 dates how how many people you know stars or watch uh, this repo or, uh, and fork, that means how many people like clone this repo uh, from the official GitHub uh, repository. And you you know, you know can click on uh, different column to see the ranking uh, of uh, different like stats. For example, uh, the practical AI, even though they don't have uh, like uh, a lot of comments on hacker news, that means they don't have like a high score, but uh, there's a lot of activity on GitHub in the past 28 uh, dates and you can choose different date range as well for example for the full month of december let's see which one have the highest score on github for example here uh Preco ai have the highest uh, activity events on github a lot of people starting and forking on it but of course kudos is the one that everyone talking about in hacker news so this visualization report is out of the scope of this tutorial uh, I'm sorry, uh, but we only covered a part of how to build a data pipeline, which is the most important part in my, in my opinion. However, uh, the final output of the data pipeline will be a BigQuery table, and you can use it to build the visualization dashboard using Google Data Studio, which is a completely free service from Google and extremely easy to use. Uh, to build a visualization report from any data sources that you want, not just from Google Bakery. Uh, so now that you know what we are going to build, let's get started. 
But first, let's talk about Google BigQuery and why I choose it. So I have received a lot of um, requests about using Airflow to integrate with other big data or cloud services. Uh, after some consideration, I believe Google BigQuery is a great option. So let's go through an overview of BigQuery to understand the reason why I choose it for this tutorial. So Google BigQuery is a big data analytics product from Google that helps you run analysis on massive data set using Google Cloud infrastructure. So with the power of BigQuery, you can run query to analyze terabytes of data within seconds. Uh, some characteristics of Google BigQuery, the first one is serverless computing, which is an execution model where the cloud provider, uh, like uh, Amazon Web Service or Google Cloud, will dynamically allocate resources to run your code and only charge for that amount of resources. Uh, basically, you just need to write and submit your code and a cloud provider will take care of how to run it and how much resource it needed. Highly scalable, uh, it can scale up to 10 of thousands of machine in Google Data Center. So if you have worked with any relational databases before like MySQL or My Microsoft SQL Server, you have to spend a lot of time hosting the database and with uh, limited resources, it's impossible to scan through terabytes of uh, data. Uh, high performance, uh, massively parallel execution, and automatic performance optimization. Like I said, your query, uh, instead of running on one machine, it can run on 10 of thousands of machines, uh, making it uh, run extremely fast. Uh, high availability, uh, automatically replicates data between zones. Uh, to enable high uh, availability. It also automatically load balances to provide optimal performance and to minimize the impact of any hardware failures. So the advantage of, use, uh, of choosing Google BigQuery for this tutorial is that uh, first, you have access to the Google BigQuery public datasets. So Google will pay for the storage of these datasets and provide public access to the data via your cloud project. You, you only pay for the queries that you perform on the data. However, uh, Google gives you a one terabyte per month free tier for queries, making getting started super easy. Uh, that means the storage of the public data set is free, and we have a, a free tier that one terabyte per month to run the queries free as well. So this tutorial, if you run a Google BigQuery, is completely free, okay? You don't have to pay for anything. Another advantage is real-time analysis, like I said, on massive data set. Uh, no ops or no operation. That means you don't need to do any operation work like setting up or maintaining any infrastructure databases. Just focus on your code or your query and let Google Cloud take care of the rest. So that's the overview of Google BigQuery. Next, we're going to try to access Google Cloud and BigQuery. The first thing if you want to access Google Cloud is you have to sign in to your Google account. In this case, I already signed into my you know, Google account and this is my email address. You can easily you know, sign up for Google account easily. Uh, the second step is you search for Google Cloud uh, on you know, Google and it will take you to the first link and usually the first link here is the link will take you to sign up Google account. I already signed up, but usually this button right here will tell you to sign up and you click on it, it, t uh, it just, you know, you have to go through the sign up process to put in your name, uh, your address and your credit card. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, like I said, this tutorial is completely free. You will just need to, your information to verify that that's who you are and they want to make sure that you don't uh, do crazy things in Google Cloud that cost them a lot of money. Uh, if you want to be, you know, safe, uh, I think in, in your credit card, uh, a lot of credit card company, uh, they have some kind of, you know, uh, virtual number or soft safe number that you can set a limited amount like $1 or $2 and it create for you a virtual number in credit card and you can put your credit card de there. And if you do crazy thing with it, you know, it only charge you one dollar because that's a maximum amount they're allowed to charge, and that, that's it. So uh, I already signed up. So let's click on go to console to head to the uh, cloud console of Google. So this is the um, you know the first page that you see when you go to Google Cloud after you sign up. So Google Cloud is um, organized by different project level. So if you click on this link here, it will tell you you know uh, my Google Cloud currently have uh, two different projects. Um, you can feel free, usually they, they give you, you know, the first project to work on, but feel free, you know, to click on new project and enter any new project name uh, that you want to, to work on. So in, in this tutorial, we'll be using the project that I have already created called Apply Data Science 
test. This is the project name. So let's head over to this dashboard here and try to go to Google Cloud Bakery after you have already signed up for the Google Cloud. So if you click on Bakery, so this is the UI of Bakery. This is like the beta UI. And if you click on this link, go to the classic web UI Bakery. And if you click on Add Data here and click on Explore Public Dataset, you see there's hundreds of public dataset that Google already put here for you, like the Genome Project. Uh, Bitcoin pu public data, uh, crime data. Uh, there's also, I think, uh, GDL data. There's Hacker News data here that we just talked about. And there's also image data. So there's hundreds of public data set. And these are huge data set right there, the terabytes of data set if you want to play around. Um, and it's completely free. The storage of them completely free for you um, to, to work on. You only pay for the query. But if you keep, if you're using the free tier, uh, that I told you, like, uh, Google give you, like, one terabyte of uh, monthly free tier. It's completely free. Um, so let's head over to our BigQuery Classic UI because, you know, I, I prefer that UI to, to work with uh, BigQuery. So there are a couple of things you'll notice on this uh, BigQuery web UI. First of all is the public data set. I contain, you know, BigQuery public data, uh, dot uh, hacker news, and then the, this is table name. So BigQuery is architect by project level. So this is project. BigQuery public data is the project level. Hacker News is data set level. And in Hacker News, you have multiple uh, tables that contain different data. The full Hacker News is set here. Uh, description is set. It's a full daily uh, update of all the story and comments in Hacker News. And you see the last modify is uh, today, which is December uh, 31st. Uh, at uh, 5 a.m. That means that every day, any new story or comment or new will be pushed uh, to uh, GitHub. Um, another data set on uh, different project. If you want to see this project, you can click on uh, this uh, button here, uh, switch to project and display project, and you put GitHub uh, archive, which is the project level name, and click display, and you click OK, it will show you in and this uh, sidebar here and this uh, github archive data all of the um, you know activity you know on github will be organized by year month or day level uh, but we work it with with the daily level so you see all the data organized by date so each date is a new table in bakery and it dated back from until uh, from 2016 un until now and you click on it you see you know uh, this is the information you're working on. So let's explore the data a bit. So th the first step you're working with any data new data set is to try to run some analysis to explore the data. So if you take a look at the um, schema section on GitHub data, you see uh, this is all the field or different column. And they have the description here. Uh, so this is the schema to tell you, you know, um, the data type of each field, uh, type is string, boolean, or record. Record is like repeated field and, and here. And each of the field will have description de de described uh, the field name, right? So uh, like I said, this data set contain all the public activity on GitHub. And you see, you know, each single activity on, on GitHub will be recorded on, on this uh, table. So let's head over to GitHub to understand what I mean by each activity is recorded on a given data set. So if you go to your GitHub repository, let, let's say I'm heading to my uh, GitHub uh, repo Airflow tutorial, every single event that you click on like star or fork, or you're pushing a commit, or you issue uh, a comment on GitHub, every single activity will be recorded on this table. Now let's head over to the Hacker News dataset to see what it contains. So in the Hacker News dataset here, and if you click on a full table, you see all the field in, in this table, which is, you know, uh, the username of the, the person on Hacker News, uh, TAM, uh, timestamp, and different type. If it's a story, it contains uh, the full story of the Hacker News story. And if it's common, uh, that means uh, the the full uh, comment that that person that you uh, uh, that person here put on Hacker News. So that's the two data set we'll be working on. And also, if you want to learn more about these two data set, I put all information and link to Bakery and also more information about these two data set in the blog post and in the description below. 
So the first step, if we want to work with before we building any data pipeline, is we have to do some explored data analysis. So it's also my first time going through this data set as well. I've never worked with these two data set before, but all, for the sake of this tutorial, uh, bear with me through the explored data analysis. So the first step in working with any data set, this is my experience to you as well, is to do some analysis to explore the data. And you can either use the BigQuery web UI to run your ad hoc query, or you can go to my Jupyter Notebook to reproduce my analysis. So if you click on this link here, it will take to, uh, you to my Jupyter uh, Notebook in the GitHub repo. And um, if you want to, you can just you know copy this query, go to the Google BigQuery um, web UI, paste in that query, right? Click on Show Option. Uh, because this is a standard SQL and the default uh, of BigQuery Web UI is legacy. I know why, but standard SQL is like most updated query. So make sure you uh, click on show option and check the new legacy SQL and click run. And then you s have the same output uh, query that I, I have. Okay, and if you want to, you can either read through my uh, analysis or if you want to run uh, my analysis, then you have to clone my uh, repo uh, to, to run the same analysis that I have. If you clone my GitHub repo, and in here you do see this you know, notebook directory, if you head over it, in, in there there's a Docker Compose file. So uh, this Docker Compose uh, will contain the Jupyter Notebook environment uh, to run uh, this uh, an analysis, run the same notebook that I have. So Let's see how would I run it. So if you clone the GitHub repo, you do CD GitHub Airflow Tutorial. So you see the notebook to, uh, folder there. You CD to the notebook folder. And you run Docker Compose up. I mean, it will build the Jupyter Notebook environment for you. And the link to this environment, if you check uh, the Docker Compose file in a notebook, it will be localhost 8889, and this is the co token of it, right? So you copy the first the first time you go to the notebook is you have the top copy this token here, head over to the browser, type in localhost 8889, paste in the token, and hit enter and it will take you to the uh, notebook environment and you click on work and there's a notebook right here and the first time when you run through this notebook see the first time you just click ship enter to go to different uh, different cell and you have to pass in the, pro uh, the project ID here in this case if you head over to our cloud environment this is the project ID you will see so this is the project ID that we'll be working on and it will be different in your in your cloud environment because you use a different project than mine okay so you copy this id you paste it here ship enter and move past to this query and you hit ship enter the first time it will ask you for some authentication and immediately you click on this link it give you the token uh, you sign in, it give you the, the uh, click on allow, it give you a token, and you copy this token, you paste it here, enter, and then uh, that's it. And then it al already, you know, uh, verify that you have authenticate as who you identify you are, and the query run to, and you can run to the second query to see the same uh, output that I have. So the first query, let, let's go to the, the, the query in my notebook because I find it easier to uh, to explain. So first, we're going to do some analysis on the GitHub uh, activity data. So the first query I'm trying to ask is, what is the different event type of the GitHub activity? So the number one event that have the highest count for this specific, uh, typical date, and you can choose a different date as well. I just picked you know, the first day of December. Uh, is a push event. I mean, a lot of people pushing comment to GitHub, and of course it makes sense, right? Uh, issue comment event. I mean, people you know issue a comment, a question, and then I'll, I'll answer question, which is, what is the top ten repo with the most comments in in their issue? And if you run through this query, right, uh, I 
select repo name, I do the cal and the group by a web type is issue command event. And the number one uh, repo is the Google test. The second one is Azure. And the third one, cool, that's, I mean, people have a lot of question and issue with these repo. And the third question I might ask is, what is the top 10 repo by starts and fork event? I mean, uh, based on the activity, you know, what is the uh, GitHub repo that a lot of people, you know, watch uh, this repo or fork this repo? And the first one is in CSS. And you can just copy this and, you know, search for it. What does it do? The second one is Python CN. Right. So you just go to some question, try to ask yourself to explore it, set, try to understand more uh, about it. Uh, and uh, next, we're going to go to some explored data analysis with Hacker News data. For example, the question I ask is, what is the top domain share in uh, Hacker News? Because Hacker News is a aggregation website that you know aggregate all other tech news from different domain or different sources. And of course, the number one domain with the highest scale for this date is GitHub. The second one is Medium. The third one is YouTube. But if you take a look at the average score, that means this average score on Hacker News for those story that being shared on Hacker News, New York Times have the highest score, which totally makes sense because New, New York Times is um, uh, a more, you know, uh, trusted source that and the story is there is very high quality so they have a high higher score of people you know upvote and comment on hacker news compared to the other sources another question you might ask is what domains have the best chance of getting more than 40 upvotes so the more upvotes or the more score uh, that uh, a certain domain have it have a higher chance to go to the front page of hacker news Right. So by just, you know, it just go to this exploratory and analysis I do uh, and you can choose to run the same or reproduce my analysis. Just run through the query I do using uh, after you authenticate to it or you can write your own query to uh, try to understand um, the uh, data. And this is the example final table, which is you join. So uh, I join the two table together. The first one is the GitHub activity. The second one is the Hacker News. So Hacker News, they have different domain, right? From GitHub, uh, all the uh, story from GitHub, from Medium, from New York Times. But in this case, we only focus on what is the Hacker News that talk about certain GitHub repo? And what is the event that happened with those repo? And when you join the, and in this query, I just basically uh, join these two tables together and then this is a similar table that you see on the dashboard, right? The date on Hacker News, the GitHub URL, uh, the GitHub repo, uh, the score on Hacker News, the story ID of Hacker News, and number of store and fork that happened on GitHub. So this is like an example of the final table that power the dashboard. So after you go through this analysis, you kind of understand the data. Uh, now we can actually build the data pipeline. So now we head over to the most important part, which is actually building the data pipeline what to, after we explore the data. So in order to make the tutorial short, uh, I have uh, already set up the data pipeline here. So if you head over to the GitHub repo, you go to uh, example, G Cloud example, and BigQuery GitHub train. So this is the actual data pipeline that I already set up. So instead of writing the code line by line, which will take a lot of time, uh, I just go through each step and explain to you why I'm doing it and the input output of each step. Uh, feel free to take a look at my code on GitHub, but I think the best way to learn is to get your hand dirty. Uh, and, and try to actually do the job. So just go through this tutorial to understand the high level of data pipeline and the meaning of each step and try to implement it yourself after you watch the video. Uh, see, you, see if you can replicate uh, my data pipeline without actually looking at my code and only use it at a reference uh, if you get stuck. Um, I will have a little challenge for you at the end of review if you're up for uh, an interesting challenge. And I hope you remember the five step uh, to write an airflow data pipeline. So the first step is importing the modules. Uh, the first question you might ask is how do you know which operator to use? In this uh, tutorial, we will use two operator. 
BigQuery check operator, which is used to check if the table or the data exists before using the BigQuery operator to actually running heavy computation or run actual query, um, right? So how do you know that this is the f syntax to import the uh, to operator? If you want to, you can head over to the Airflow official website, which is, you know, uh, airflow.rpg.org, and you click on integration. Um, and they have a lot of different, you know, cloud energy like Azure, AWS, Databricks. I click on Google Cloud, and we click on BigQuery. It will tell you different operator to use. And let's head over to the BigQuery check operator. And you see this class here, airflow.contrib.operator.bigquery check operator. So it's the same thing as this one, right? And you can see it from this path here, import the BigQuery uh, operator. I find it easier to go to the actual, you know, GitHub repo Airflow because in this case we use the uh, version 1.10. So if you click on Airflow and you click on Contrib uh, operators, and you hit over to BigQuery check operator, you see the same. This is the same path here, Airflow the Contrib operator dot BigQuery check operator, and you import this class. BigQuery check operator, and you see different uh, parameter that you can use here, which is like uh, SQL, uh, BigQuery connection ID. We will see the usage of those two parameters in a moment. So that's the first step to find and import the module or the operator that you, you need to use. Uh, there's one thing I, I want to talk about in this uh, tutorial is in order to run uh, this example, the, uh, you need to set uh, a few things uh, up first. So specifically, you need to create a Surface account in a Google Cloud Console, uh, set up the Google Cloud Connection in Airflow, and supply the config variable. And if you click on the documentation, the link here, it will show you the instruction of how to set up and uh, the connection and everything to run to uh, this uh, data pipeline. Uh, because you know, like uh, in a you see in the analysis when we run through the query. The first step we do is always, you know, doing some authentication to BigQuery so that Google Cloud know that I am the person who authenticate and have the permission to run the query, right? But in our data pipeline, because we want to run it daily, uh, and we don't want every time we run and ask for authentication permission, so we have to go through the step of creating service account and uh, set up the Google Cloud connection in Airflow. And we will talk more about Airflow connection in the future, which is is a uh, a best practice is to use Airflow connection um, to run different cloud services, so different system to connect and run different system, right? So in the first step here to create create a, a, ser a service account uh, key, you head over to console cloud at Google, click on the navigation bar here, go to IAM and admin, and click on service account. And I haven't had any service account yet, so let's create one. So click on create service account and let, let's just put them apply DS test, you know, and this is uh, the service account uh, that you will have and you create. And next you have to give them a permission. And usually I you I give them a project editor permission. Make sure you give them editor editor permission because if you give them a view permission, you know, then this uh, service account only have the view permission but doesn't have the uh, right access uh, access to the data set. So click on Project Editor and click Continue. It will take a few moments to set up everything and click Done. And if you click on the Action, Create a Key, and that's the service account here, the JSON. Click Create. And there will be a key. Uh, this key here we download to, to your machine. And so let's head over to our documentation. What is the next step? So the first step, we go to the console, we create a service account and make sure that JSON key have the project editor permission. Next, we will turn on our Airflow uh, Docker environment and set up the Airflow connection. So let's do that. So this is our uh, BigQuery GitHub deck. And also, uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I create uh, these two bash scripts and a new, you know, Docker Compose gcloud.yaml, which is a new uh, Docker environment specifically for uh, this example, because we don't want to mess up with the other example that I have in the previous tutorial. Uh, tutorial is about like the introduction 
to Airflow with these two there. And so this uh, Docker Compose uh, uh, gcloud.yaml file will set up a new environment, which is the Google Cloud environment, which doesn't mess up the other environment that we have, right? And it's very so you see the the benefit of using Docker right now that we can easily start and stop different environment and work in different system easily. So let me turn off the Jupyter notebook here. Make sure after you um, do Docker Compose up, that means you turn on the Docker environment. Make sure you type Docker Compose down to turn off that environment. All right. So this is my GitHub. Let's go back to the master branch here. And you know to run this example, I put the the shorter version. Uh, how to start environment here? So you just start uh, type run to to run the Docker environment, and after you finish, you just type you know stop to stop it. So let's see what I put in the uh, run environment. So this is the uh, the command you see. In, in that uh, file, which Docker compose, and then use and then minus F. I mean, I use this file Docker YAML to start the environment. So let's do that then. So all you need to do type bash run gcloud example at h, which is the bash file, and it start up the environment of the uh, that start up the Docker environment for our Google Cloud example. It will take like a few seconds to start everything up and running, and after that, you head over here to our web browser, type, I hope you remember, localhost, eight, uh, I think it's 8080, eight zero. and that's our Avalon environment with only one DAC, which is the BigQuery GitHub Trends. So let's head over to our documentation to go to the next step to set up the Avalon uh, connection. So after you have the cloud server key, right, and the, the JSON key is uh, saved to your machine, now you have to copy it and put into uh, your uh, Airflow uh, folder in order to set up the connection. So I have the folder here. Th this is our Airflow tutorial, you know, uh, GitHub repo that I cloned to machine and you should do the same thing. So if I go to Airflow tutorial, example, gcloud example DAC, and I go to the DAC folder, I create a new folder, and you see in the BigQuery GitHub, this is our, our DAC right here, right? So I create a new folder called support. And in support, I create a new folder called keys. And then this is the folder I'm going to copy. Uh, I'm going to move the JSON key that's been downloaded to my machine to this uh, folder. So let's do that. I'm going to copy the key that I have and I drop it here. And if you head over to uh, supply and text, you see the new support folder and the keys here. And this is how we're going to set up the Airflow connection. I'm going to show you right now. So in order for Airflow to authenticate or trigger the job in BigQuery, you have to have a key to set up the uh, connection. So if you click on admin connection, and all this tutorial is in the documentation, and you, know, you can easily follow. You can create. And I call them, uh, let me see what I call them. I call it my GCP con, which is my Google Cloud Platform connection. The connection type is Google Cloud Platform. The project ID, I only uh, you know tell you the project ID is this project. Apply the sign test, which you see this is you know, the Google Cloud project that you're currently working on. So go back here. Project ID, the key file path. Oh, okay. Now this is interesting. So the key file path. So if you take a look at the Docker Compose G Cloud YAML file, this is the file path we're going to use. This is the local file path in the Docker environment. So you copy it. You put it here. See, use a local Airflow DAX. And what does it mount to? So in the DAX we have support key and this one. So we copy. I will copy the name of the key. Control C, head over here. So in the DAC, we have the support folder that lead to key, and th that lead to this, um, sorry, this key right here, which is the name, I forgot to copy. Uh, command C, I'm working on Mac, not uh, Windows. So Command C, so this is the path of the key. And the scope, you have to put the scope as well. So go back to the documentation. The scope is this scope right here that gives you full permission to run any type of job in Google Cloud Platform. And this is it. All of 
this information is in the documentation for you to set up the airflow connection so feel free to take a look so, and follow um, step by step i did right i click saved so my gcp connection now you have a my gcp connection this is the new connection that connect to google cloud platform that gives you airflow uh, that gives your airflow permission to run any job on google cloud platform right and we only use it in this tutorial to run uh, bakery uh, job so this is your key go back here so this is uh, your deck now we have to choose the uh, like i said a bakery project and it is set that we'll be working on uh, for this um, example so here if you head to bakery this is the project that i'm currently working on for bakery and you can pick different uh, project that you want to work on so this this is the bakery public project right so these uh, data on the bakery public project is free and you can have free access but if any uh, data you put on your project uh, it will be count toward uh, your uh, you know tier, and usually in a month, uh, the first ten gigabyte of data uh, is free. So I, that's why you know I uh, I try to keep you know it uh, less than ten gigabyte, right? So we will query terabyte of data here, but the query will write a smaller table here that less than like a gigabyte. That, that you mean you don't have to pay for anything. So in the project, we create a new data set. Uh, let me see what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it GitHub Trends because uh, this is the date uh, the data set we're going to store all the table here. Location in US. If you want to be safe, you can put the data expiration day. I put it like ex uh, expiration in seven days. That means all of the data in this GitHub after seven days will be ultimately de be deleted. So it's going to be safe. That means uh, you don't know, right? You just keep pushing and pushing and pushing more data into the data set. And one day it'd be more than 10 gigabyte. That means you have to pay money for it, right? So I just put like seven day after seven day, all the data here, just like temporary data will be ultimately de deleted. So I cre create that data set. So you copy it. So this is your uh, project uh, name. And this is your data set name. And you go to and you have to supply the config variable here. So your project name is apply data science test here. And your data set name is give a trends. And that's it. After you set up a connection, uh, you put your connection ID here, you put the, the your BigQuery project, and you can name it what, whatever you want. Usually you have a different BigQuery project than I do, and a different data set than I do. So you just put these three configurable in, and that's it. And that's how you set up the connection, and we're ready to run our uh, workflow. So the first step uh, I have mentioned in writing uh, the pipeline is importing the module you want to use. In this case, we work with Google Cloud BigQuery, so we have to import these two operator to use. The second step, is to set up the default argument, um, right? So in this case here, the default argument is uh, basically the owner is airflow, depends on pass is true. Uh, start day, we pick the first date of December, end day, and you can extend this end day to the end of uh, December, like in December uh, 31st as well, which is this current day. I just put like five day because you know, for less data, so we can see email failure, email retry, which I have talked about. Retry two times. I mean, every time it fail, the test only retry you know, first time, second time, and retry delay. That mean every time it fail, to wait for five seconds before it retry. Um, the third step in running uh, a workflow is instantiate a DAG. That mean you give it a name. This is your workflow name. That's what we see in the. Uh, the DAC folder here. This is the name of DAC. Default argument. We put uh, we assign a default argument to this DAC, and we put the schedule interval. I mean, every day it run at 9 p.m. This is a U UTC time, by the way. And uh, we have supplied the config variable in to be used for all our uh, tasks here. So let's go over our tasks to see what they're actually doing. So the fourth step of building the pipeline is putting all the tasks in in your DAC in your workflow, right? So the first task here, as you can see, is that we use the BigQuery check operator in order to instantiate 
an operator and assign it to a task, we have to first put the task ID. The task ID is the BigQuery check GitHub archive date. Uh, the parameter I told you earlier, when you uh, you can all go over to the uh, GitHub uh, official website to, to look at the BigQuery check operator and the parameter as associated with it. So the SQL, which is the SQL statement that we use to run this BigQuery check operator, it use legacy SQL is for because we use the standard SQL and we assign a connection uh, here uh, so that let Airflow know that okay it used this connection to trigger the job in BigQuery and finally we assign uh, this task to our DAC. So how do you test that this one run uh, correctly? So in the uh, documentation here I, I, I give you in instruction as well, which is after you set up a connection and you enter the config variable, you can use this command to test each task in the DAC to see how they perform. And this is a very a good practice as well in why you're working or building or testing your data pipeline. You don't want to run and schedule the whole thing, right? You want to test each individual task in your workflow, and you can use this command right here. So you use this Docker Compose command to run through this Docker Compose file, this is, and you run this Airflow uh, command to test your DAC, so you enter your DAC ID, in this case, the BigQuery GitHub trend, which is your DAC ID, the specific task ID that you created, and the execution date. So example, if you want to ta uh, test the task number one, you enter this whole command here, you enter the DAC ID, which is the BigQuery GitHub trend, the task ID for the first task is, you see here, BigQuery check GitHub archive date, and the date you want to test it. So the date, I usually pick any date specifically in the range of start date to end date, so I pick the first day, right? And so I just picked the first day, so 2018, December 1st, but you can also pick the, the second days as well if you want to, so I can pick the second day, any day in your start and day range. So if you copy this one, you go over to, uh, you open a new uh, terminal and you cop, uh, you paste in uh, your command to test your, you hit enter, and immediately it go to the airflow environment and it give you the input output. So starting attempt one of three, right? This is how you manually debugging or testing your pipeline. And it give you the, X, uh, the input as well, which is the, the standard SQL here, and the output, which is, this is the output of this query. And if you uh, want to, you can even copy this query and go to the BigQuery web UI, paste it in. Let me copy it again. So copy it. Go to the BigQuery web UI, paste in your query, and hit run. And you see the same output. What does the query do? So for this specific date, right? So uh, let's let's explore this query, and and this, I think this is the the easiest way to understand my DAC is that you take each output or each query input, or each step, and try to explore what does it do. So if you select star for this, like, and you know, remove the where clause here, you select star GitHub archive, which is the uh, public uh, data set that contain all the GitHub archive data and a, a table summary. And it give you all the, um, uh, basically table summary is like a metadata, a hidden metadata table in BigQuery that contain all the table in this project. And you see, you know, uh, and I told you, you know, uh, all the table here in this sort of all the hidden table. So what this query doing is that we, so let's go back here. What is query doing is I check if this table ID, because we want to check if this one exists. And this is a very, very minor computation, right? It doesn't actually do any huge computation on large data set. So this is the check operator is usually the first task in your workflow is to check if the table exists. If the table for that day exists, then we can move on to next step to run the computation. And I have talked about this before, which, which is the execution dependency in the case that the second task depend on the output of the first task. Let's say a new day coming in your scheduled workflow, and there's some, you know, 
delay in your process that a new table haven't arrived yet. For example, this new day of uh, uh, and the new day that the table haven't arrived yet, and you want to run huge computation immediately, and there's no table there, and it output a bunch of error. So the first thing you usually do is check if the table exists. And this BigQuery check operator here, if you read the documentation, uh, let, let, let's read about it. So if you go to the GitHub Airflow, right? Integration, Google Cloud Platform, BigQuery check barrier is perform a check again, a SQL query that will return a single row with different value. What does it do? So if the return value is either false or zero or empty, this will Totally, you know, raise an error, and th th so this check operator is check if the table, the GitHub archive data for this date exists. If it doesn't exist, it will only, you know, retry in five minutes. And we want to check the table exists first before we run any actual computation. So that's the purpose of this BigQuery check operator. And you can use the same uh, command that I show you here to test. What does the test do? Uh, copy that query. Go to the BigQuery operator. Uh, sorry, the BigQuery web UI. Paste in that query and try to explore what does the query do. And if you want to understand the syntax of, you know, BigQuery, you can always go to search for BigQuery reference, right? And uh, and it should and go to standard SQL function and, and operator, and it will tell you the syntax or different function you can use. Uh, to to write your BigQuery query and all the different function here. And here different function you can use or the query syntax of your standard SQL select statement, where claw, how to do group by, how to do join. So I find it easier just you know read in the document uh, official documentation. So that's the first task. Um, that check the if the GitHub archive data for that exists, and the second task we do the same thing. That first task, which is check if the Hacker News data have data existed for the, the day that we want to process data in, and the same thing if you want to test if that task running, what is the input output of that task, just head over to the command line. Uh, first, you know, copy the task ID of the second task. Basically, in here is is BQ check Hacker News full. And run the same command and uh, that I show you. So in this case, we just remove the task ID of the first task, paste in the uh, task ID of the second task, and run. And it will run through each task. And this is the way that you, you you're working on and you're trying to understand what does it do. And you can easily copy uh, this query. And you see the input. This is the input of query, and this is the output. I'm I'm not gonna go to it, but you understand the idea. Basically, uh, select. Uh, and this is the format timestamp. This is the timestamp in a timestamp, and this is just you know format the timestamp into a date. So if you go to actually, let me copy this query to, to show you what I mean. So we head over to the BigQuery uh, web UI again. We copy this query. So if I put in timestamp, right, and time story information timestamp, let's do limit one and hit run you see this is the timestamp so in every single event at a certain timestamp will be pushed into this uh, data but we're not working with you know individual timestamp level we're working with we the aggregate data for the whole date that's why we uh, format into a date and we only care about the hack new story we don't care about your comment we don't care about other things so we do a little bit filter we filter uh, Hacker News only for if the data exists for that day, and we check if any story being pushed for that day. And if um, the data exists, and there's um, that means this this pass uh, this check is passed, and we move on to the next task. And the next task is so so if you go to the actual Airflow DAG, this is the graph view, right? The first task is to check if GitHub Archive exists. The second task is to check if Hacker News full exists. And you see the computation graph or the dependency graph here. If these two check operator exists, that move to do actual computation. And finally, it joins the two uh, data together here. 
So the third task is that you write uh, GitHub daily metric to partition table. And the same thing, we copy this task ID and we go to the uh, input to go to the command line to see what is the input and output of this task. So I, I paste in the task ID here and I click run. I run the same thing for the same day. So this is the input and the output of this task is currently running but the output of this task is actually a table. So let me copy the query here and go to BigQuery Web UI. So now if you head over to BigQuery Web UI and you refresh the page, you see a new table being created, right? And this is the, the computation we actually do that this is the partition table that every day when you write to this table we write to that partition and you click on preview, you see the preview data. I mean, oh, we write to the partition of 2018-1201. And on that day, this is all the repo and the aggregation of star and fork for specific repo name. And that this is the query that outputs this repo. This is the query here. So let me explain what does this query do. So we select, uh, let's read the subquery first. So we select from the GitHub archive date specific for that date, where time is watch event or fork event. I mean, we only focus on if a person, a repo is being, uh, a new event being a star or being cloned on GitHub. And we only, uh, we pull out the repo and actor name and we do aggregation in here. and. Uh, and this is the final output of this table, right? So if you take a look at the graph here, you see, this is the task we just run successfully on. That means it checked that the data exists. If yes, it write to a daily metric that every day, what is a uh, repo being, how many event that happened on a certain repo, how many star it got, how many fork it got. Now let's go over the next task in our workflow, which is the fourth one. So the, the third task is we aggregate a daily GitHub data. But the fourth uh, task is a little bit more tr uh, interesting. In the fourth task, we will aggregate this, uh, the output of the third task, but for the past 28 date. I mean, we will aggregate uh, how many star it got for the last 28 day, last seven day, last one day, so that we can compare different metric uh, or see the trend of how GitHub the uh, event being uh, w or any GitHub activity working on in the past 28 days. So let's, so this query is a little bit difficult to see here, but if we head over to our command line and actually run the task ID, the same thing here. I mean, you run the same command, you pass in that ID, task ID and a date, and we actually run it, you will see the input and the output of the query. So this task is run is currently running, waiting for job to complete, and this is the input of the task. So we can copy this query here, and this is uh, successfully run. So if we head over to our Google BigQuery, and if you refresh it, you should see a new table, which is called GitHub Aggregation. And this one is actually an aggregation of the past 28 days of GitHub. So if you click on here, you see uh, what is the the date for this repo and what is the star for last 28 day, seven day or one day, right? And so it, it's very exciting, but because like we only run for one day, so of course these three uh, column, we have the same uh, uh, number, the same result. But if you at this table have more partition, like have 28 day of data, you will see uh, this one run to they will have different number and the past 28 days usually have a whole more star than past seven or uh, uh, past one day. But we just go to one day at a time, like one task at a time to see uh, does it run successfully, what does it do? And after everything, uh, I explain to you everything, I'll turn on this to, to see the output of the final table, right? 
So a quick thing about a BigQuery operator. So I explained to you about a parameter uh, BigQuery check operator. So for the BigQuery operator, the same thing you do is you assign task. The parameter here is you assign a SQL statement that you want to run an actual computation. The destination dataset table, which is the the destination location you want to write the output to. So you run this uh, query in a in, in some in this uh, table, and you want to write to a different table. So this is the detonate destination location you want to write to. Write is a uh, disposition. Write to indicate mean you overwrite the partition table every time you re rerun this query. Uh, allow large result. That means it uh, true. It means it allow more uh, record to write to. Uh, use less legacy SQL fall because you, we use the standard SQL that I have explained to you. BigQuery Con ID, uh, we assign the BigQuery connection ID so that uh, Airflow have permission to send this query to be run on Google Cloud, right? We don't, so we don't want to, you know, every time we want to write a query or know what it is, we have to head over to BigQuery up, BigQuery Web UI to run like manually. We want this pipeline to, you know, make everything automatic and run daily for us, right? And you see a little bit of weird syntax here like yesterday ds no dash what does it mean or yesterday ds this is the macro uh, date that being supported by airflow because this is an airflow uh, daily pipeline right and we don't want to manually put in a date here and like here we have to manually put in the, the date in our query uh, for example if the, the query we just run to output this table right if each of this is a fixed date like pass uh, seven date but if we use the macro being supported by Airflow, it automatically do the calculation for us. So every new date, it will input a new day, and based on that new day, it will do the calculation backward to see what is the day from uh, the seven days ago from this date, which is the 11th, and what is the 28th date from this day, which is the 11th, uh, right? So it only do all the calculation, the date calculation for us that we have don't have to, to take care of. The next task is the big uh, a we run some computation on Hacker News data. So this task it, we use to aggregate Hacker News data to a daily partition table, and you can check the uh, computation graph here. So we run to this one, we we run to this one, we run to this one, and now we go to uh, the Hacker News data. We check. If the data exists, now we go to the uh, fifth task, which is write to hack a new aggregation daily. So let's run this task to see what it actually do. So we copy this task ID, we throw it to the command line, and we pass it here to see what it actually do. And it is going to show you the input. And we just copy it, see if it runs successfully, any error. Oh, it's being run successfully. So we go to the BigQuery Web UI. I will paste the query here and I'll explain to you what it does. And you can also refresh the BigQuery Web UI and you see a new table, which is a hack new aggregation. And this is the output, right? So this is the input and this is the output from this query. So in this query, what does it do? So we query from the BigQuery. Uh, public data set, Hacker News data set, we do some filter. We only care about if the Hacker News uh, story and a timestamp is only in one day it between December 1st, December 2nd and the URL is from GitHub, right? Because every story from Hacker News, it come from different domain like like we see in the analysis, it can come from YouTube, it can come from New York Times, but we only care about if the Domain is from GitHub and not from the GitHub block. And uh, in the select statement, we format uh, format the timestamp by date. Uh, the by here is basically what is the submitter, the Hacker News ID of the user to submit the, the story. The story ID in this link is clickable. That means you click on this story ID, um, it will give you all the story for this hacker news story uh, and then it uh, we do the regular extraction to get the github url the lead to this repo and what is the score for this 
uh, Hacker News Story ID. Uh, one thing I find interesting is to if you search for um, Hacker News GitHub, I, I find an interesting uh, repo which is called a Hacker News API, and in there you can submit an actual uh, API to get a real time report on. Uh, on Hacker News story. So instead of you have to go to, you know, uh, Hacker News, right? To read the story and things like that, you can now use the API to automate your, your process. You can use the API to search for story that have uh, a certain type or something like that. So, so if you use this API right here and you insert the Hacker News sto uh, story ID, so the other ID I just copy from our uh, BigQuery, you enter and it, it tell you it's right. So this is from this GitHub URL. Uh, this is the title talking about Ruby, uh, and it's being submitted by here. So actually, this all of this data will be will power this API for you to get a real time report on a story and people come in on Hacker News and you can build your process to do any sort of crazy thing to interact with uh, Hacker News through its API. So that's just a side note. So that's the fifth step. And now let's go over to our deck again. So after we have allegation of Hacker News and GitHub allegation, now we can do the uh, final computation step here, which is join them together. So this is the sixth step. That means join the allocated uh, table together. And instead of reading this crazy query, that I do formatting and things like that. We just head over to our command line to test it and see the exact input and output and I find it much easier to see here. So if we run to it, this, this is the input query. And this, the job is still running and it runs successfully. Now, if you head over to our BigQuery web UI and you refresh again, you should see the final table. And this is the final table that power the dashboard that I have told you. I mean, every day you have a date on Hacker News, you have the GitHub URL, you have the GitHub repo, the Hacker News sc score, the story ID, that you can use this story ID to get all the information, all the metadata all, uh, f from Hacker News using the Hacker News API. Uh, the star, that mean, uh, and fork, that means the star and fork event from GitHub. And this is the query, the input query that output this table, All right? I'm not gonna go over it, basically, it's just like a query from the two partition table from the previous step and join them together and then just, you know, get the uh, metric and that's it. And the final step you wanna do is just do a check again to check if the, the, the final table being written successfully. So let's run uh, to the final uh, task as well. So I copy the task ID here. And same thing, I use this command to check if, to check the final task. And we see the input and output. Let's run through it. Yes, and this is the input right here. It just check if this uh, table exists and the partition, the day for this table, and how many rows, and it has 30 records, and it shows successfully, right? So we're going to copy this query and head over to BigQuery UI, choose the legacy, and check the legacy option because it's a standard SQL. Hit run, and show you 30 records, and you can do select star to get all the record of that table, and this is the, that partition all the data for that vision and this data will be used to power the dashboard. So we have run through all of the tasks in uh, this workflow that actually schedule it to see how they perform, right? We have manually run it through every single task here. And this is the, the experience I want to use to give it to you as well. So while you're working or debugging or building your data pipeline is um, much easier to use the command line to test each, each job, uh, each test in your uh, uh, workflow to see if it runs successfully and if any error, fix it right there. So when you pipe them together, 
you will see them going through and that would be much easier in, instead of you you have to spend a lot of time writing the whole thing and pile them together and now you you have to debug each single one which is not good and now you see that you know it says uh the runtime of it uh, 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 run in parallel yeah you can see the tree view here and the graph view will show you okay it's currently running on december 4th uh, this one runs successfully this one currently being running and refresh right so it currently running everything is run successfully and we'll check the output later but let's head over to our workflow again uh, so I hope now you remember the five step to, to write the data pipeline. The first step is to import the, the module and you know how to find the associate operator. Just head over to the Airflow official GitHub repo or the Airflow official website to find the documentation about the operator you need to do. If you want to work with Google Cloud or BigQuery, use the BigQuery operator, or you want to work with AWS, just head over or uh, Microsoft Azure or any cloud services or other databases, just head over to mm, the GitHub repo of Airflow and find your documentation about it and read through it. The second step is set up the default argument, m mm, put in the start and end date, and you can extend the end date easily. I'll talk about a little bit problem with the start in the next uh, video. Uh, the next step is uh, instantiate a DAC. The fourth step is align all your tasks in your workflow. And the final step is setting up all the dependency. And after you set up all the dependency and everything, you will have this dependency graph or this uh, airflow executions graph. And now all of it have been run through successfully. You have no error that you can check here in the graph view, right? There's no error, everything runs successfully. And you go to the BigQuery UI and you can refresh it. Or you can either use the BigQuery, uh, this is the cl BigQuery uh, classic web UI. This is the new better UI. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't like this one. Uh, I, I prefer the other one. But I think the better UI is being improved. So if you refresh the data, you have this is the final table that we have and we have 133 record and it's a 30 record because it's a more partition right and you can query the partition to see so let's query the date let's actually query how many what is the partition day kill one is kill where actually i don't need the partition let's do the group by one So we have four partition from November 30th to December 3rd. And on each day, we have this number record. So that's it. That's our data pipeline. And this data pipeline will be used to power the visualization report. And if you want to have more fun, feel free to uh, go to this data pipeline and use the table to power the report being built in Google Data Search Studio. So we have finished running our workflow and I explain to you step by step how does it do we have completely you know uh, finished the workflow and schedule it and everything runs successfully remember after you finish running it make sure you type ctrl c to port and type docker compose down to turn off all the container being run in your machine uh, right so just a reminder on, on that thing and that's it this is the end of the tutorial in this video, we have learned a couple of things. Uh, first, we have learned about new big data cloud service, uh, which is called Google BigQuery. And we use it to run queries to analyze massive descent on a cloud infrastructure. We also learn how to do uh, explorer data analysis using the Jupyter Notebook to understand about any new type uh, of new data set. And so any new data set, this is the first step you have to do. You have to do some exploratory data analysis to understand it. And Google has a lot of public data sets about genome data, about blockchain, about chemical and image data. Feel free to play around with them if you want to. Now, finally, we have learned how to use Airflow to integrate with uh, other big data and cloud technology to orchestrate and build a production data pipeline. All the code and, uh, and the documentation will be pushed to GitHub and a blog post. So feel free to head over to read and, you know, if you for forget any step. So the two most important lessons I want you to get from this, this video is that first, 
you can use Airflow to run any source of databases or cloud services. It does not have to be Google Cloud or BigQuery at all. Uh, I use BigQuery in this tutorial because of the advantage of free computation and access to public dataset. And Airflow usually does not do that much work. It is used mostly um, to orchestrate different systems and trigger different jobs that run on those systems. So you can say like the first job is run on Google Cloud, the second job can be run on Amazon Web Service, uh, and the third job run on an internal database like MySQL, and the fourth job can run any Python script in your internal system. So Airflow is just a framework for you to orchestrate uh, uh, the job that run on different system and if you set the connection to different system using Airflow connection that you just send and trigger the job to run elsewhere so Airflow doesn't do that much work okay the second lesson I want you I want to give you is the experience uh, working on the design of big data industry you can see that in this tutorial we use uh, two public data set the github activity data and the hacker news data so the GitHub activity dataset just contain uh, a bunch of events that people committing an issue command on GitHub, right? And the Hacker News data is just uh, a bunch of story that related uh, to tech. Uh, so, but from the raw data of a bunch of little events happen on the internet that has no values, when it goes through the right hand, it becomes something much more valuable by aggregating the micro event level data, you can now create some kind of insight or a dashboard uh, from the raw data. You can now see the trend of most popular technology that people are discussing on Hacker News or actually currently working on GitHub. So if I am a CEO or an investor who want to invest millions of dollars in a new technology and you can present this insight or this finding to me, this is extremely valuable. And this is how Facebook or Google, Apple and Amazon become the biggest and most valuable company in the world as well because they have a lot and they control a lot of data. And by accumulating little events on the internet like a click, a like, a search um, that has little value but with enough data, they can connect the dots and understand more about their audience and even predict what they are interested in or what they're going to buy. So in this big data era, if you are a person who had the skill set to, from raw data, find the goal or turn raw data to goal or find inside data and use it to predict the trend or present the insight to uh, an investor or CEO, you become extremely valuable. So I hope after this tutorial, you can now build your own data pipeline in Airflow and connect to different cloud services or big data services. Uh, if you want to get your hand dirty, uh, f just go through this tutorial and try to replicate my analysis and replicate my data pipeline without looking at my code or only use it as reference. I also have a little challenge as well. So if you go through my analysis at the very end, I find another interesting data set. So there's an another public data set in Google Bigger as well, which is provided by the Python Software Foundation about the number of activity or number of downloads of the PyPy package. So usually if you do pip install um, a new package, uh, all of those activity will be recorded in this data set uh, that is provided by the Python Software Foundation. See if you can use this data set to integrate into our data pipelines as well. So I give you a little hint here. So this query that I show here will give you the top 10 download packages from PIP for this specific date. And you can see this, you know, Polter Core uh, package in a, this is a Python package. And you can use this one to, and you can find a lot of, you know, activity about this package on the GitHub data set, right? So, I just do the where clause here. I query the GitHub data set and I put in a repo name like protocol. And, and on this date, on December 1st, they have two star and four. So see if you can use this data set and integrate into our data pipeline. Uh, so the hint and resources is on our GitHub repo. Uh, let me know in the comment section. Send me your work or tag me on Twitter or Facebook if you find a challenge interesting. So this video is a starting point when things get more interesting. In the next video, I will talk about um, 
Airflow advanced concept that is built on top of this tutorial. So this is the end of our uh, video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more great content. Thanks for watching and Happy New Year.